Okay. Well, good evening, everybody, and welcome to this meeting of the Boston Public School Superintendent Search Committee. I am co-chair Pam Edinger, and because this is a remote session, I'm going to ask Ms. Liz Sullivan to please call the roll. Thank you, Chair. Ms. Harvey? Mr. O'Neill? Present. Dr. Pignato? Present. Mr. Roundtree? Present. Ms. Tang? Present. Mr. Valenzuela? Present. Dr. Edinger? Yes. Ms. Lopera won't be joining us tonight, and Mr. McNeil is absent as well. We do have a quorum. Okay, thank you very much, Ms. Sullivan. Um, I would like to note for our, um, our public that tonight's session is being shared live on Zoom. It will be rebroadcast on Boston City TV and posted on the search committee's webpage, bostonpublicschools.org slash soup search. The committee is pleased to be offering live simultaneous interpretation in the following languages, Spanish, Portuguese, Haitian Creole, Cabo Verdean, Cantonese, Mandarin, Vietnamese, Somali, French, Arabic, and American Sign Language. And after the interpreters have finished introducing themselves and providing Zoom instructions, we will activate the interpretation icon or the globe on the bottom of your screen. Click the icon to select your language preference. And um, will our Cantonese interpreter please introduce herself and give Zoom instructions? Thank you, Dr. Edinger. Um, good evening, everyone. My name is Anna. I'll be your Cantonese interpreter for the meeting today. Thank you so much. Thank you, Anna. And our Mandarin interpreter, please. Thank you, Dr. Edinger. Um, 大家好,我叫Terry,我为什么你的国语翻译,待会你在屏幕下方会看到一个地球的图标,你选择地球的图标,然后再点Mandarin就可以听到国语的频道了。如果你是用手机或者是平板电脑上来的话呢,你可以选
Hi, good evening. My name is Armando Monteiro. I'm going to be your Cavalian Creole interpreter for tonight. Boa noite, meu nome é Armando Monteiro. A mim também serve o intérprete de crioulo cabo-verdiano para a reunião de hoje à noite. Para você acessar o nosso canal, você vai na parte inferior do computador, onde você acha um pequeno globo, você faz um clique e você tem a opção de escolher uma língua de preferência que é crioulo cabo-verdiano. Muito obrigado. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. And a Haitian Creole interpreter, please. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Bonsoir tout le monde, nom c'est Nadej. C'est un réel plaisir pour moi là avec nous à soir. Moi, je suis avec moi, je vais apporter un bon service pour vous-même. Quand vous avez des questions, vous question, pas oublier de taper dans le chat là, ou bien faire nous connaître de quelque manière. Pour créer un haïtien, vous avez pesé German et sous Chanel là. À soir, nous avons créé un haïtien, vous avez um, choisi German, ok, dans le Chanel language. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I Somali interpreter, please. Good evening. My name is Camilla. I'm going to be your Somali interpreter for tonight. My name is Camilla. I'm going to be your Somali interpreter for tonight. My name is Camilla. I'm going to be your Somali interpreter for tonight. My name is Camilla. I'm going to be your Somali interpreter for tonight. My name is Camilla. I'm going to be your Somali interpreter for tonight. My name is Camilla. I'm going to be your Somali interpreter for tonight. Good evening, everyone. My name is Angel. I'll be your French interpreter tonight. Bonsoir, tout le monde. Je m'appelle Angel. Je serai votre interprète. Si vous voulez être interprété en français ou vous voulez écouter le, la réunion directement en français, allez en bas de votre écran. Je vais cliquer sur le globe et vous allez choisir la langue française. Et dans le dans le, sur cette langue française, vous allez nous écouter directement, vous interpréter la réunion en français. Merci et à bientôt. Thank you. Back to you, Pam. Thank you very much. And now our Arabic interpreter, please. Thank you, Dr. Edinger. Hello, everyone. My name is Ahmed Arubai. I will be your Arabic interpreter today. مرحباً أنا اسمي أحمد الربيعي أنا مترجم اللغة العربية لهذا اليوم بإمكانكم استماع للترجمة باللغة العربية من خلال الذهاب إلى أسفل الشاشة ستشاهدون علامة الكرة الأرضية اضغط على هذه العلامة وستظل لك اختيارات اللغات قم باختيار اللغة العربية وعند تمكن من استماع إلى الترجمة الفورية كاملة شكراً جزيلاً Thank you so much Thank you very much And our American Sign Language interpreters tonight are Kylie Kirkpatrick and Kristen Wessels. Thank you for your services. Um, thank you for all. Uh, thank you all for assisting us this evening. We will now activate the interpretation icon at the bottom of your screen. I would like to remind everyone, as well as myself, to please speak at a slower pace to assist our interpreters tonight. Okay, so we will move on to the approval of minutes, and I will entertain a motion to approve the minutes of our April 5th 2022 meeting um, as presented. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Thank you. May I have a second? Second. Okay, is there any discussion, objections to the motion? Not hearing uh, any objections. Ms. Sullivan, can you please call the roll? Sure. Ms. Harvey? Yes. Mr. O'Neill? Yes. Dr. Pignato? Yes. Mr. Roundtree? Yes. Ms. Tang? This is for the 22nd, was it? This is for April. For April 5th. Oh, April 5th. Yeah. I wasn't there, but. Oh, um, okay. Okay. Would you like to abstain? I'll abstain, yeah. Thank you. Mr. Valenzuela? Yes. Dr. Edinger. Yes, please. The minutes are approved. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, we will now move on to public comments. The committee has set aside up to 15 minutes of tonight's agenda for public comments. I will now turn this over to Ms. Sullivan to, um, to conduct for us, please. Thank you, Dr. Edinger. The public comment period for today's meeting will be 15 minutes in total. Each person will have two minutes to speak. And I will remind you when you have 30 seconds remaining. Those who require interpretation services will receive an additional two minutes. Please click the raise hand button if you wish to speak. I will call on speakers in the order in which hands are raised. When I call your name, please state your name, affiliation, and what neighborhood you are from before you begin.
We'll begin with Mr. John Mudd. Sorry, did I make it, Liz? <laughs> yes, good evening. Good evening. I, I can't see you, but I hope you can see me. Uh, so uh, there's been some confusion from the beginning about the availability of the search firm proposals for public uh, reading. And, and last time they were public and discussed. This time, no, they were not available due to some uh, shift in the RFP uh, uh, sort of te technical requirements. It's an irony because the last time many of us learned about JG Consulting through uh, seeing their proposal and reading about them. In any case, uh, my understanding is that the proposals will be made public uh, once a contract is signed. So the question is, uh, is there a contract? And uh, I'd request also that BPS make proposals public without making us go through some public records request formality. Um, going forward, there's some questions which might have been answered if I'd seen the proposal. First, who is the lead on the search and who are the members of the search team? Second, will JG Consulting meet with stakeholders to hear concerns of the community directly? as has been done in the past. Three, uh, will uh, the, uh, there be public updates by JG Consulting uh, with the search committee? And I see that since they're on the agenda tonight, uh, that's a good sign. So finally, I would just reiterate the request that the proposals be made public immediately after the contract is signed and without going through the unnecessary formality uh, of, of a public records request, which frankly, uh, in my 30 years of working with the school committee and its committees, I've never been asked to do before. Thank you for hearing me. Thank you, Mr. Mudd. If anyone else wishes to speak, please raise your virtual hand. Dr. Edinger, I'm not seeing any other hands to speak. Thank you, Ms. Sullivan. And um, hopefully we'll be able to answer uh, many of those questions that Mr. Mudd posed tonight. Um, it is our goal to be transparent and for, um, for information to be shared. So we will continue to try really hard. Um, uh, just some brief search process updates for folks and also for the record. Um, in terms of engagement, uh, the online superintendent search survey will close this Friday, that's April 15th. Um, as of noon today, we have received 484 responses to the survey. And we did say that we will um, have a report back on that once um, the survey period is done and the information is processed. So we will be looking forward to that. Uh, the co-chairs are working with BPS staff to schedule a presentation to the committee later this month. Um, so that's, that's, that's what I just referred to um, on, the, uh, on the survey results. Um, additional sessions, the co-chairs are working with staff to finalize dates to engage with school leaders um, that I, as you remember, that was canceled due to um, some scheduling complexities. Um, we're also eager to hear directly from the community and community-based organizations and create more opportunities for native language dialogue. So we are working on scheduling some additional small group listening sessions uh, with stakeholders um, who speak other BPS home languages, um, the stakeholders from various groups. Uh, we encourage groups who want to share feedback to convene and host their own listening sessions, as we have been encouraging um, until up to this point, uh, with the goal of um, either sending a memo to the search committee, uh, official email, or inviting search committee members who are available to attend and listen with you. Um, and search committee members, please look out for an email from staff on scheduling and attending some of these sessions. Uh, there are other formats for engagement. Uh, video testimony and text submissions are um, continuing to be uh, accepted via the search webpage. 
and that would be bostonpublicschools.org slash soup search. And the email is similar, superintendent search at bostonpublicschools.org. Um, I, I wanted to make a note that even though the job description has been voted on and approved, uh, the committee welcomes continuous feedback from the community. The feedback will help us um, shape the interview questions for the candidates and ultimately uh, the candidates that are considered and who is selected. And also the information that we gathered as Lorena has said so many times um, will, be, um, will be gathered for um, both process improvement for the, school, uh, for the school committee as well as the incoming um, superintendent. Are there any questions at this point um, on the engagements that we've been um, planning and executing? Okay, um, not hearing any. Let me let me move on to the to the next brief piece. On the I actually have my hand. Yes, ma'am. Oh, I'm so sorry. You know, I have such a hard time. I apologize, Roxy. Every time. Go ahead. I just wanted to clarify. Um, I know you mentioned the surveys are closing on Friday. Yes. Is that also occurring with the video and the text submissions? Everything is those th both all three modes of communication for feedback are closing on Friday. I, I don't know if all three are. Let me double check with Liz. I thought that the survey is done because they have to close it up to do the assessment. But I thought we're continuing to take feedback on the other pieces, correct? That was my understanding as well, Dr. Edinger, that, that was, those pieces would stay open and it's just the survey that's closing. Okay. And they would stay open with no end date in mind currently. Thank Correct. You. Okay. And, and did I see Dr. Pignato's hand or no? No, I'm imagining hands, no, no hands. <laughs> okay. No hands. All right, I'll try, I'll try harder. Um, and the last piece of uh, reporting back I have is actually on the job description. Um, and, the, and the executive search firm, um, whom we will hear from tonight. So on April 6th, the school committee unanimously voted um, to approve the job description that we as a search committee recommended um, with the understanding that there will be um, just surface polishing and editing. And I know that there's, I think one piece of feedback from this committee that needs to be added and we promised that it would, and then that would be completed and the, um, and the polished version will, um, will be sent to the search committee members. Um, and then thereafter, we need to post this thing quickly uh, to allow for, um, to allow for um, application uh, to happen. Uh, so that's on the job description. And we have awarded the RFP uh, for an executive search firm, as, um, as you know, to JG Consulting. Um, and we, again, thank the RFP evaluation committee and um, the job description has been shared with JG Consulting um, and they will be uh, working on it to polish up for the posting and to add the additional pieces that we had agreed that we would. Um, which leads us to the, any questions on that? Because this leads us to the, to, to the introduction of, um, of our search firm. Okay, so I am delighted tonight to welcome uh, James Guerrero president and CEO of JG Consulting, um, who will be supporting the BPS superintendent search. Uh, I have asked him to join us today to discuss the process moving forward and to answer any questions our committee members may have. Um, Mr. Guerrero, the floor is yours. Thank you, Dr. Edinger, and thank you to all the committee members and your vote of confidence in selecting JG Consulting to serve at your will. Um, it is my honor to and, and true pleasure to be with you this evening. Um, there are other search consultants. I will serve as the principal consultant, which essentially is your lead consultant and primary point of contact. Uh, the other members of the firm who will represent Boston Public Schools in, in the spirit of recruiting your next superintendent include uh, three full-time staff members in addition to myself, Lizzie Carroll, um, who serves as our chief of staff will be my right hand internally. In addition to Lizzie is Jacob Wilson, who is our administrative chief, who essentially serves as my executive assistant. Andres Garcia, who will be our coordinator internally. And then the part-time consultants, the faculty who will represent us in the superintendent search include Mr. Alton Fraley, Dr. Steve Flores, Richard Carranza, 
and Amanda Sargent. So essentially you will have eight dedicated personnel on behalf of JG Consulting representing um, the Boston Public Schools and, and working alongside each of you. And I'd also like to thank um, your staff, if I may. Um, Liz Sullivan and Mary have been tremendous in providing us with input and feedback and scheduling all the various meetings that we've had to this point. So I wanna give them credit for um, being very good uh, communicators with us thus far. And again, just wanna thank you for your service to the Boston Public Schools and, and your vote of confidence in, in selecting us to represent you in, in this capacity. So I think if it's appropriate at this time, Dr. Edinger, I wanna allow enough space and time to entertain any questions that the committee members may have um, and then um, answer those questions at, at this time, unless you feel there's another appropriate step. Um, I, are there any general questions that folks may wanna ask or should we go ahead and proceed and allow questions to come at, you know, at whatever point of, um, at whatever interval that you find appropriate, James? Um, is there any immediate question that you have about the, the selection process? The makeup of the team at this point, because I think I want James to help us understand the the, the steps in the process as we go right um, into into the next stage, and I thought that would be the key pieces. So if you want to wait, we can wait and just ask all the questions at the end. It's up to you. Okay, it's a quiet bunch tonight. Why don't you go ahead, James, and we'll interrupt you as we need to. Okay. Perfect. So thank you. And again, um, we are grateful for the ongoing communication. Oh, I think I see Mr. O'Neill's hand was raised. Oh, there you go. I'm Mr. sorry, Dr. Adinger. I just thought that particularly since this is the first time Mr. Guerrero is, is talking to the full group and uh, Mr. Valla, Valenzuela and I did have the opportunity to learn a little bit more, but Mr. Guerrero, could you just take a moment please and explain about JG Consulting, you know, some of the work that you've done. I know you've done a, a, a number of superintendent searches for large districts similar to ours nationwide. So before you get into us, could you just take a moment please and explain JG, if that's okay? Yes, sir, and no, I appreciate the, um the opportunity to share a little bit more about our, our, our firm. So we are what we consider a full service consultancy. Uh, we are most known as an executive search firm recruiting executive level talent at various levels. Um, we have, uh, have experience serving the Boston Public Schools, in fact, representing the Office of English Language Learners, and then most recently recruited um, a, a head of school at, at Madison um, Tech. So we've done quite a bit of work nationwide serving in the spirit of public education. Many of those faculty members that I referenced earlier in my um, um, opening remarks have all served in public education, whether they started their careers as teachers and then eventually ascending to the top, um, serving as superintendents. And in fact, some of our faculty members currently serve as school board members in large um, urban settings. And um, most specifically, we have in here in recent months served the San Antonio Independent School District um, in pursuit of their superintendent, um, and also the Houston Independent School District, Austin Independent School District, and a number of others around the country, including the East Baton Rouge Parish School System, Washoe County Schools in Kansas City, Kansas Public Schools, all, all of whom are members of the Council of the Great City Schools which uh, you as a school district are a member as well. Um, so all in the spirit of public education. So the executive recruitment work that we provide uh, runs the gamut East Coast to West Coast. Um, so we're very excited about this opportunity. And so we look forward to working alongside all of you and, and as we recruit your next superintendent. The other two uh, um, areas of support that we provide that I'll briefly mention, because we are a full service consultancy. We also, run a national leadership academy training aspiring superintendents. So we have a cohort that consists of on average 30 aspiring superintendents each year. We have different sitting superintendents who coach um, the various cohorts that we um, run and administer each year. Some of those coaches include um, the current superintendent of the San Francisco Unified School District, Dr. Vince Matthews, Dr. Lamar Gory of the Caddo Parish, um, school school district in Louisiana and here locally um, and, and hopefully with board approval um, soon to be Dr. Stephanie Elizalde of Austin ISD. Um, so we're constantly and continuously looking for ascending talent 
who wish to pursue the superintendency. Um, and then the final component that we offer is more of a, a service related um, activity where we provide strategic planning support and other areas of professional development, including executive coaching. So at a very high level, those are some of the services that we offer as a consultancy. Um, but our work is rooted in public education, primarily serving large urban and complex school systems. So I appreciate the question. Thank you, Mr. O'Neill. Dr. Edinger, my hand is up. You know what? I'm going. I'm going to pin you to <laughs> to the top of my screen so I can see you. I, I, I just was waiting to make sure you saw it. So, okay. My apologies. Please go ahead. Thank you, um, Mr. Guerra. Um, two things, and it may become with, as you're describing the process. Um, and if it does, that's lovely. Um, one is. What you just described, I'm presuming, is in your proposal because it's all those things are the reasons that you must have been selected or your, your agency was selected. So I just want to check with you as far as are you comfortable or is your agency comfortable with making sure that that proposal is public so that we maintain that transparency? Thank you. I, I appreciate your willingness to do that because I think it's important that not you just verbalize it, mm -hmm. but everyone see what was written in that proposal that made you a highly desirable organization to lead this search. So um, that is appreciated that you're willing to share it publicly with um, the community and this listening group. The second aspect is I wanted to ask about when you're describing the process, could you also speak about the process of vetting in the sense of we've heard a lot about, you know, authentic engagement. And as you may know, it's a focal point with the, or even a sore point in our district with really being able to engage with families, educators, the whole community. So could you also talk about how you vet um, potential superintendents beyond the standard, like here are your references, like how do they engage with the CPAC? How do they engage with families and having actual members in those communities from the previous um, districts they've worked with? How does that all happen and provide feedback once we start to get to that narrowing point? So we really know how does some, is this person coming in someone who's getting good references from the community that they were supposed to be serving also. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, the terrific questions and thank you for those. So I've taken a couple of notes. So if I missed anything, please interrupt me. Um, so as far as the transparency is concerned, first and foremost, everything that we do will be uh, as, as, as transparent as allowed by the, the committee. So with respect to our proposal, that can be public facing. Any document that we provide to you for review with the exception of candidate confidential information will be furnished um, for public consumption. So our proposal, if it's the will of the committee, um, if you'd like to upload that to, for example, to your superintendent search page, I see no reason why that couldn't be released publicly, but it's not for me to make that executive decision. I would defer to the will of the committee at this point if that's appropriate, um, but I don't have any issue with our proposal being um, shared publicly. And all of our contact information for the respective individuals that I, I named earlier is, is also listed there. So we welcome input and feedback. And I do appreciate um, uh, the public comment from, from Mr. Mudd about um, inquiring about the process, the proposal, and making that publicly available. So I think if it is the will of the committee, I'm certainly fine um, with, with having that available to um, your community and any of those who are interested in reviewing our information. Um, and as far as the vetting and, and the engagement components are concerned, we do a very th thorough vetting and screening of each candidate. Uh, some of the high level examples of how we engage with candidates is we require a number of, of different factors to, to be um, completed within the executive search process, one of which is what we consider an on-demand interview. So rather than just submitting the formal application packet, which will consist of your letter of interest as a candidate, the resume slash VITA, academic credentials, verification forms, we take it a step further and require that each candidate submit the on-demand interview. So essentially envision a, a similar scenario to our engagement this evening. However, it's a little less impersonal. The candidates will be invited to submit answers to a series of questions 
Historically, those ha there have been four questions. One question, um, for example, is what drew you to the position of superintendent with the Boston Public Schools? The candidates will record their responses using their own device, whether it's a laptop, a desktop, a tablet. They have an opportunity to present themselves as if they're interviewing with you for the first time. And so that's one way in which we screen and vet candidates. So we're looking for these candidates that are aligning to what we consider the North Star, which is synonymous for us with your job description with that you've worked so hard to create with all of that public feedback and the authentic engagement that you've had to this point. Um, so we, we're looking for those pieces to really align talent and, and a very direct correlation as closely as we can correlate it to the job description. And then there's further background checks and screening that we'll do with, uh, with our own internal system and processes that are outlined in the proposal. Now, as far as any family engagement or forward facing public facing, if you will, engagement with the candidates and, and your community members, that will determine on what we feel, and I say we, I'm, I'm referring to the committee, what you feel is appropriate at the given time once we get to those major milestones of the search process. Um, so I, I'm, not, I'm making an assumption that once we get to the latter stages, and when I refer to major milestones, there are sequential steps that we'll take leading up to naming your loan finalist. And perhaps there's an opportunity for the, com the community, um, in theory, to get to meet the candidates, if you will. Other questions? I'm looking. I'm looking hard at hands. Please. <laughs> Look, can I just make a clarifying point? Because I noticed you talked about the community um, engaging, and that's one aspect of it. But my question also was related to their previous community, right? So it wasn't just that you know, meaning that communities in Boston right now. So whether it's our CPACs or our DLACs, our different organizations and community partners engage with the finalists. It was also about the finalist previous experience engaging with similar stakeholders from whatever state place or they're coming from. If you're also vetting that and from those previous engagements beyond engaging with these current stakeholders in Boston. Yes, ma'am, thank you for the clarification. And one of the questions within the on-demand interview experience in that portal that I referenced speaks to their experience working with school boards, community, both internal and external stakeholders. So they have an allotted time period to respond to that. So they have to disclose how much engagement they've had with their respective communities. But we take it a step further. And as we're doing our, our standard reference checks and working with our colleagues around the country, we can do a, a thorough dive into their actual experience and to ensure that what they've shared with us via the on-demand interview um, is indeed um, factual, um, so that we, we do a very thorough job of, of vetting that piece. Okay. When you say on demand, is that AI doing it or is that human? So you have, have technology really look at the videos and basically stream it, or is it live people from your agency that is actually looking at the recording? It's live people, and as well as you as a committee will have access to the on demand interviews as well. So when we present the candidates to you for the first time, for your vetting and your screening and, and based on the recommendations according to the job description that you've worked so hard to create, you'll have an opportunity to watch these videos as well. So that information will, will be presented in closed session and executive session to protect the confidentiality of this process and in its entirety. But our team, the eight consultants who will be uh, representing you in this capacity, will individually watch each and every one of the videos and align the responses according to the job description that you've created. Okay. All right. Why don't we go ahead, um, James, and, and, and get into um, your presentation of the stages uh, that we will go through um, from this point on. And then we can again engage in, you know, in, 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 in this conversation as we go, if we need to interrupt. Okay, thank you, Dr. Edinger. Yeah, so I think it's appropriate this time to disclose where we are in terms of the current week. Um, so we're in the process of uh, reviewing the job description that was provided to us today. So thank you again uh, to Liz for sharing that document with us and, and bravo to all the work that you've put in 
to that document. It's very thorough. It's very robust. The content um, from my purview looks, looks solid. Um, I've asked my team uh, by the end of this week to provide me with any input with respect to just the not necessarily the content, but more of, of the facade of that document. So we're going to um, add some graphics, add some other things to make it um, just more aesthetic before we advertise the job posting. So our intention is to post and open the job um, portal, which on our website, jgconsulting.us, if you go to current searches, all of the various executive searches that we lead on behalf of our school district partners can be found there. So you'll, you will see um, by the end of this week that the Boston Public Schools opportunity to serve as a superintendent will be posted there. Um, so we will take this document, refine it with the various graphics, just again, for cleanliness sake, add that to the website. And then from there, we will um, submit requisitions to all the various organizations that we work with nationwide. Um, I like to say that we'll cast a very wide net across the country to recruit and solicit um, uh, talent for consideration. So give you examples. Uh, the Council of Great City Schools, they have a job board. You will find um, there that the job link will redirect to jgconsulting.us, um, the Association of School Superintendents, uh, the National Alliance of Black School Educators, the Association of Latino Administrators and Superintendents. So all of the major publications that we gen uh, generally use as an executive search firm, all of the advertisements will redirect to jgconsulting.us. We also confirmed today that your talent um, management system internally with the Boston Public Schools will have a, uh, an, an update with the job description there as well, also redirecting back to our website. So that's the first step this week that we need to accomplish is posting the job description and, and recruiting talent to apply. Um, and in theory, the, the recruitment aspect has already began. We've been in conversation with candidates since day one, since we were informed of, of this amazing opportunity. And um, I can assure you that I personally have received inquiries and requests and candidates are just chomping at the bit, getting ready to apply. Um, so it's an exciting time. I think the question I would have uh, for the committee at this time is how, how much time should we allot to keep the job portal open to accept applications. And I can, I can give you a recommendation based on our best practice, um, but you know, I wanna you know, defer to the will of the committee as well. One of the things that James, that, that I know that is of at least great interest to me and I'm, and I'm sure a number of our committee members is that, um, that the poll um, has, um, is, it's a sufficient pool, um, both in terms of qualifications, but also in terms of um, gender, race, ethnicity, and the diversity uh, that the that that the um, um, that we would want. Because from that, we will then yield right our um, our next level candidates and finalists. Um, talk a little bit about, if you would, about what um, how. By what measures do you do you do you see a poll as being sufficient and adequate um, in order to move on to the next level? Great question. And so I can speak from historical context and just give you data um, and share some data points with our practice. So in the past six and a, six and a half years, we've conducted 25 superintendent searches across the United States. Uh, so one, we're very intentional with the work that we do. We seek to work with good school districts, good committees, good school boards. More than 72% of the superintendents hired by our school district partners have been a person of color. Um, and currently there are 45% of those same superintendents hired by our school district partners are women. So when we provide to you the candidates or the total you know, talent pool, we're gonna bring to you a very diverse group of talent to consider, um, including a very balanced mix of, of um, diversity and, and, and gender. So whatever you feel as a committee is appropriate, and again, at the appropriate time, um, we can, um, in theory, end the job portal or close the job portal. Um, generally, we typically will keep our job portals open for a period of, of a calendar month, 
Um, we can go anywhere from three weeks to four weeks is kind of the norm. But again, you know, in the spirit of working at the will of the committee, we'll simply adhere our timeline to the goals and the aspirations that you have for this superintendent search. Okay. Questions from committee members on this? So I'm just looking at a calendar just for simplicity's sake. So let's say, hypothetically, we open the job portal this Friday, April the 15th. If we were to keep it open for four calendar weeks, theoretically, we could close uh, the job portal or have a deadline to uh, for expiration on Friday, May the 6th. That would give us four um, complete weeks unless the committee members have any objection to that suggestion. There, there, is, um, there is also the practice, and I would love to hear um, your thoughts on this, James, which is that the, the posting remains open until filled or until a certain stage in the search. Um, have you had searches in the past that that would give a sort of a first stage date on you know these you know proposals or or applications um, submitted up to this point will be considered beginning on this date, but you leave the um, leave a window open for possible um, for possible late entrance, um, and I know that Jessica has her hand up as well. So, okay, yeah, and if I may, I can answer that quickly. Um... No, we, we have not. We typically will engage um, in a superintendent search uh, with the mindset of, of working backwards. So again, using only hypotheticals, I know that the time frame is to name a loan finalist according to your superintendent search page um, by late June. So whatever that date is in June, we create the milestones and a timeline um, with that date in mind. So working backwards and just at a very high level, the final round of interviews would be the next um, milestone proceeding, naming your loan finalist. You know, it could be three rounds of interviews, right? So you could have a potential engagement with your community. You can have a second round and then the first round. Leading up to that point, proceeding those three interview stages, if you will, um, is the presentation of candidates. So at a given time, we'll actually need to have an end date for applicants to apply. Because for us, we need to compile all of the application materials. We will provide each of you, if we're doing this in closed session and in person, for example, each of you will receive an iPad uh, to review all of the digital artifacts submitted to us. And then we'll present to you in a large group setting uh, the on-demand interviews as well. So we need to establish some cutoff points so that way as a firm, we can do our vetting, our screening, all the background checks, doing those um, standard practices that we, we've implemented within our firm. Um, so that way we're, we're checking all the boxes. Now, if it's the will of the committee to extend the search beyond that first presentation of candidates, if you feel that we haven't reached the goals and the objectives and all those hopes and aspirations that were shared with you, then certainly at that point, I think it would be appropriate for us to make a collective decision whether we need to continue receiving applicants. That would be my recommendation. But again, uh, you'll hear me say we're going to work at the will of the committee. Okay, Jessica. Thank you. Um, and nice to meet you, uh, Mr. Guerra. Um, I, you actually answered some of the questions I was going to ask because I was about to say, as an educator, I always think uh, about backward planning. And, and so I was wondering what the timeline was of the backward plan planning and with such a short timeline as well. But uh, so you answered a lot of that. But I guess then uh, a question maybe for Dr. Edinger um, is at what point are we going to start meeting in person and um, you know, looking at uh, the materials, having discussions, et cetera. Um, and then also, and, and I apologize, I'm, I've done a lot of listening tonight and I haven't talked as much because I've missed the last two meetings due to the funeral and then the negotiations last week. Um, so I apologize if this has already been answered, but I, I do wonder, you know, at what point are we going to 
um, engage our community stakeholders again in the interview process? Is it for finalists? Um, uh, at, at what point? Um, I, I guess those you'd mentioned the milestones, I guess. And so I guess I was just trying to get a better sense of that. And also, if you said it closed on May 6th, um, but it was open this Friday, and you suggested three or four weeks, because that's three weeks. I thought we had four weeks. If, if three weeks is, is generally the minimum that we would recommend, if, if it's the will of the committee to have it only open for three weeks, we can certainly do that. But I think four weeks would be sufficient. Um, and that's our standard practice is about four weeks. Okay, so that would be May 13th, I think, then if it's available on or, um, public on Friday. And then I guess I, I do kind of, um, I don't know, actually, Dr. Eidinger, if this is what you were su suggesting, but uh, I do think that it, it's good to have like a kind of a soft cutoff, but we wouldn't want to um, yeah. exclude any potential candidates later. So, so one of the things Jessica was thinking about and 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 I'm, forgive me for my informality. It's getting late in the day, <laughs> and um, that that oh, I lost my train of thought. Here we go. Um, that I think at some point, you know, in week two and in week three, we ought to have get a sense from James as to what the sufficiency of the pool looks like, right? Because if if we are finding that things are really vibrant and we have great representations from all of the diversity groups that we're looking at, then open it up, you know, having it to be four weeks may serve our interests, um, may be fine. But if we're finding that at the end of week three, we, we have no diversity of any sort and we don't have um, what I would call a credible pool, then I think we have to revisit, right? What, what that cutoff date needs to be. Um, it's, it's hard to tell now because it, you know, you, you don't know until you sort of get into the recruitment of it. Um, so, so perhaps the, the committee would consider um, not making that decision to extend until we see what's up in week two and week three, and then we can leave um, the decision open. It makes it a little bit more difficult for James to manage on the back end. Um, but I'm hoping that by week three, we'll see that we have a vibrant pool and in four weeks is enough. Can, can we sort of park that decision until a little bit later on in the process? Like, will you be comfortable with that? Are you? So, so we call it, we, at this uh, are you asking me or are you asking? Yeah, yes, I was asking you. Oh, are you okay. Right? <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, I, I'm okay with that. Um, and, and then my follow-up, I guess, too, is, you know, in the past process, um, I'm sad to say this is my second round here and doing that it. <laughs> uh, um, the, we met individually with the consulting firm too to kind of uh, share ideas and, and thoughts as well. And I don't know if we're going to be doing that too. Um, I, I, I think maybe we, we, we think about that a bit and we can make a decision as we go. If you wish to, you know, sort of give feedback to James, I don't see any reason why you couldn't. And um, I, I would, I would, perhaps be mindful that we give most of the feedback around this table so we get the benefit of folks' wisdom um, around the table here. Um, is yeah. There, yeah, okay. I, I understand that, but I also think that if, you know, we have um, names of people, you know, someone like this, et cetera, that this yeah. is not necessarily the best place to, yeah, no, no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm right. like any, like any other, you know, member of the public or member of the committee. If you have leads, I would assume that James would want to have them <laughs> yeah. because it opens up the pool and it, and it allows for, um, um, it allows for um, better recruitment. So un unless members of the committee, you have comments on that, or, I mean, I don't see any harm in it. You will be receiving those kinds of communications regardless. Um, from the interested public to some degree, so. Yeah, absolutely. No, I would, I would echo Dr. Edinger's uh, comments there. So if you as individuals representing the committee have a candidate in mind, whomever that may be, or receive a referral from uh, a peer or colleague, family member, friend, 
um, please feel free to share that information with me and I will share, convey that same set of information to, to my colleagues um, because we are working on your behalf. So it's our job and our duty, our responsibility to recruit those individuals. So feel free in whatever format Dr. Edinger you feel is best, um, you know, whether it's by email or a simple phone call, you know, I'll, I'll be happy to provide you with my direct contact information, which is also included in the proposal. Okay. And, and, and just as a matter of, of updating, each week by the close of business on Friday, we'll provide you with a generic update uh, by email and a, just a basic communication, letting you know some standard information that we can disclose in an email, such as the number of candidates who have applied to that point, the number of states represented in the talent pool, and just some of the basic high-level information without disclosing any of the candidate information. That's fine. And so that way you can keep a, 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 fair, a fair pulse on, on where we stand in the, in the recruitment process. Okay, thank you. Um, Roxy, see, I did see you this time. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. I'm better um, trained now, thank you. <laughs> so a couple of things. Um, one, as I was thinking, um, Mr. Guerra, just about when you said that you, you know, you do the thorough vetting, blah, blah, blah. Um, and do you have specific, you know, cause I'm trying, I'm trying to understand it specifically cause your answer, it didn't, it, it was, the, it didn't give me exactly what I'm trying to understand fully. So this is why I'm coming back around to see if I can ask it in a way that will help me get the information that will help me understand this. So my question is when you are vetting these, people that you narrow down, so the finalists. So in Boston, we have, whether it's um, for the teacher, the BTU, special ed, SPED PAC, DLAC, D district English learners, citywide parent council, as far as these family groups, then we have partners and organizations, right? So that's what Boston has. So these, these individuals may have experience in other, whether towns, states, cities, et cetera who may have other names for these types of organizations. Mm -hmm. So do you have like a list of comparable groups that you would then be checking with, regardless of where this individual comes from, if it's named something else, mm -hmm. to see how they engage with these important stakeholders that are very important in Boston. So to find out how they speaking, not just to them saying, oh, I was a great engager, I did wonderful. I'm glad they think that. But mm -hmm. what about the stakeholder groups? Do you engage with them when you get to the finalists? And do you have specific ones that are comparable with what we have in Boston to then be able to see? Because you'll notice in the job description, there's a lot of talk about the way they engage with closing the achievement gap, special education, mm -hmm. multilingual learners. And there's a reason for that, right? So do you have comparable groups that you then check in with to see their experience with that? Yes. Does that question make sense? Yes, it does. And thank you again for the clarifying question. So in, in any large city that we, we work in, there's various um, groups, committee groups, subgroups. Um, to give you some context, with the Houston Independent School District, the sixth largest school system in the United States, we conducted more than 200 stakeholder meetings while we were developing the job description and leadership profile. There's a lot of synergy uh, with some of the naming conventions for your subcommittee groups, your stakeholder groups with other cities that we work in. So we're able to tease out some of those themes and identify where there's overlap or transferable information where we can compare like-minded theories of action, I I ideals, the norms and values that were expressed to each of you during your stakeholder meetings. Um, and, and the reason I said, you know, um, bravo to, to the work that you've done to create the job description, that's a lot of the heavy lifting up front. Um, so you've done a lot of the, the, the busy work, um, as I like to say, leading up to this stage in the superintendent search process. Um, if there's any clarifying um, points that we need to, to better understand, we'll certainly ask you. And perhaps my colleagues may even have clarifying questions as they start to read through some of the um, job description um, details. Uh, I think an important element that can assist us in, in ensuring our, our success and working with one another is having an aggregate of the survey data once that closes um, this Friday. So that way we can better understand what is being shared with you, what is needed 
what are the hopes and aspirations uh, that your constituents, that the community members, the students have, student voice is paramount. Um, so all of those elements are gonna pay, play a very key role in us in the vetting and the screening process. So we will go through it as a team to better align the candidates with their current experiences and their past experiences and, and align those synergies that I'm referencing. So hopefully I'm answering the question in a much better, a be much better way now for you. Okay, so Wait, yeah, we'll have more at the time. And I see a right. lot of hands up. So right. one I, other thing, I do see them, but I just wanted to ask, because you know, I held my hand up for quite some time. So I just want to get to my other component I wanted to ask you about. Well, one I wanted to comment, I thought four weeks was a fair, was a good time. I was glad to hear you say that because I don't think this process should be rushed. And if we get to the point where it's like after four weeks, it's like, you know, we really just don't have a good bunch. Mm -hmm. I personally would prefer that whether we got to restart over and figure the process out than to take better than, well, this is better than nothing. Cause I don't believe in better than nothing for Boston families or our students. So I just want to be clear that I think four weeks is a good idea. So I was glad that you didn't do it like, a, oh, we can hold it open for one or two weeks and rush the process. And then I just wanted to ask, cause you mentioned how you've done all these other searches. Do you keep track of the longevity? Like when you place, when you've placed individuals in these, um, especially individuals of color into these positions, how long have they been staying? Are they, do your candidates, do you have a track record of your candidates staying, you know, multiple years? Or is this a like, get my two years experience and I'm out of here type of thing? Great question. And I was actually going to add this as a matter of, uh, of assurance. Um, the superintendents that we've recruited are still serving in their respective roles today. So earlier I, I shared some data points with you. In six and a half years, we've recruited 25 superintendents on behalf of our district partners. Of the 25, only two have um, gone on or have taken a promotion to a larger system. But the national average for a district such as the Boston Public Schools is 2.8 years. We've well exceeded that national norm. The superintendents that we've recruited um, greater than 90% are still serving in their respective roles today. So our track record is phenomenal. It's one of the areas that as a firm we're most proud of. Um, and it, you know, I think that's something that if, if you haven't had an opportunity to speak to some of our other school district partners, I think that's something that they would, they would share with you. Um, they've been very happy with the service of their superintendents and it's something that we're incredibly proud of. Okay, so before we go any further, I wanted to, you know, do a time check because we're at time. However, um, there there are three questions um, on the table, and I would like to be able to take care of that. And then the last piece, James, is really to give folks a sense of the three interview pieces that 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 the candidate will have to go through. I don't want there to be confusion as to what those engagements look like. So maybe we do the three questions, and we mm -hmm. talk about first level search, final level search, and recommendation to the uh, to the school committee and the school, school committee uh, public interview. So that that's the set of information that I want all of us to walk away with because all of you would need to look at your calendars once we get off of you know this particular session to block out time to ensure that we can be all together rather in person or, or virtually. Okay, so let's go to Dr. Pignato, then we go to Jean, and then we, go back to Jessica and then the three stages. Thank you, uh, <laughs> Ms. Baguera, nice to meet you. Um, so in your experience around when um, during the academic year, do superintendent candidates on average accept positions in preparation for the following school year? Um, and my second question is, um, what are your thoughts on having in-person interviews with the finalists so that we can get to know them better? Yeah, great questions, thank you. Um, so uh, historically, there, uh, you know, the time frame that we're in now would be ideal for recruiting superintendents because we're approaching the summer months. So it's a, it's a better time for transitioning. Um, as we get to the summer months, the superintendent finalists can begin that transition from whatever respective school district they're currently serving in. Um, however, now with what I consider to be a mass exodus of superintendents across the United States and a number of vacancies that there are, especially in some of the large complex systems that 
you all are very familiar with. Um, I think it was Mr. O'Neill who cited during our interview that there were 17 uh, superintendent vacancies just within the council of the Great City School District. Um, so with that being said, there's not a perfect time anymore, but I am seeing such a fluid movement of superintendents continuously throughout the calendar calendar year, not just in the calendar school year, but the calendar year of the, the fiscal year. Um, so I, so I, I don't think there's an ideal time, but we ha happen to be in an ideal time if we're looking at it from a historical perspective. I had a second part to my oh. question. Okay. Uh, the in-person in interviews with finalists. What are yeah. your thoughts on that? So I think, uh, I think generally, I think human, the human condition, human nature is we do our best work in person. I think we all have grown accustomed um, to this virtual environment, this virtual setting. But I think this is such a critical hire that it's, it's going to lend itself to be much more um, authentic and genuine if we're, we are able to have in-person interviews. I think it is, it is very important to conduct in-person interviews. Now, I can't make that decision on behalf of the committee. I know that there are certain parameters that we must work within and be respectful and mindful of everyone's health and well-being. But if we're afforded the opportunity to meet in person, I think that that would be our recommendation. Now, some of our recent um, superintendent search experiences have started in a virtual format, similar to this one, where you might interview the candidates in round one virtually, uh, where, where our, our board partners have. And then the second round or the final round, if you will, was done in person. Um, so I think we can approach it in a very hybrid type of um, working environment, but again, at the will of the committee, what you feel is appropriate, the candidates will oblige. Um, so what I would often tell you is that all of the, the schedule of events, it's important that all of you have a majority consensus and are present. Um, the candidates will work around your availability and your schedule. So once we publish the timeline, the candidates will earmark their, their respective calendars and plan accordingly. Terrific. Thank and you. Thank you, Dr. Fignato. Gene? Hi, James. Uh, thanks for taking the time to, uh, to, to meet with us. I've uh, um, enjoyed kind of listening to your, your um, how you've discussed um, your practice. So in the interest of time, I had a, I had a couple of, of quick questions. Um, I, we, as, as you know, that um, we were talking about the timeline and we've, and we've um, We've, we've stated that we don't want to do an interim process. We want to go and, and hire a new superintendent um, within um, the, the, the timeline, which would be by June 30th. Do you think that that is um, a reasonable timeline um, for you to conduct um, you and your search firm uh, to support us through the process to have someone in place by uh, the end of June? Yes, sir, absolutely. So I, I commented earlier that a lot of the hard work of engaging with the community, the survey's open, you've developed the job profile, the job description, which takes a, a tremendous amount of work and effort on your part. Um, so now the part of the recruitment, the screening, the vetting, where we, where we shine as a firm, that can begin now. Um, in recent, in the past year, we actually conducted a superintendent search in one month in its entirety, including all the stakeholder meetings. Now that's not ideal, it was very truncated and very fast, but we still have enough time allotted without compromising the integrity of our work or compromising the quality of our work. So I, I feel confident by the end of June, we'll have a, a loan finalist named uh, successfully on behalf of Boston Public Schools. Um, thank you. Um, and I, I was interested, you know, uh, you just brought up the idea of vetting. Um, I'd like to learn a little bit more about how once, how you actually, who do you speak to? Um, uh, when you're going through the vetting process and um, determining like the references for people, you know, who are going to be, um, who, who will be considering later in the process? Right. No, great question. So more than just the standard references that a candidate will submit for our consideration, for your consideration, you know, you have your standard supervisors, past supervisors, perhaps school board members, board presidents, yeah. those that they feel will speak um, you know, at, at, at an advantage on these candidates' behalf. But we also take a deeper dive into uh, the other uh, potential individuals they may have worked with in the past that aren't necessarily listed on their resumes or vetoes. 
Um, due to our, our large footprint across the country, we have a very robust network. Um, so we're able to get to some of the, the meat on the bone that otherwise isn't known for public consumption. And I think that's one of the great value adds working with us is that we know a lot of educators, a lot of practitioners in the space and are, are well in tune with various communities um, across the country. So we'll do a very thorough job of vetting. In addition to that, we work with a, uh, an organization um, as a matter of formality to do a formal background check. So that way, if any candidate ap applies to serve in this role, we're not withholding any information. We're bringing to you every bit of information that, that we have um, that has been made available to us. So that way, as a committee, you can make an educated decision based on your recommendation. Um, so that would so it would be safe to say that, for instance, if we were um, you were vetting someone who had been a superintendent of a district, you know, you, we we may hear from teachers, principals in the district, and other folks who have worked in the central office. That's correct. Yes, sir. Um, do you have it? Would you wouldn't happen to have it? Or I'm wondering if you have a, like a flow chart that would kind of describe your process that we could you know, share with folks um, who, who may have questions over the next uh, couple months about um, where we are in the process, uh, yeah. things like that. Yeah, also a great question. So within our proposal, there's a, a graphic, um, I forget exactly what page it is on, but it's like the Chevron uh, diagram where it has the major milestones. So right now we're engaging with all of you, um, getting to know each other, developing that rapport, getting to know the community. The next step is opening the job profile. So you'll see the scope and sequence um, of the major milestones. So if, if you could refer to that proposal and I can send it um, to, to Liz again, if she, if she wouldn't mind sharing it with all of the committee members, you can see all of the major steps. It's a two page overview of, the, of all of the major steps that we take in the executive search process. Great, thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you, Jean. Jessica? You know, I'll I'll wait because I know we're over time and I would actually like to hear more of the the okay. three kind of tiers and the okay. plan. You know, I, I know Jose has his hand up. Jose, do you, do, do you want to do this now? Or do you want to hold for a minute and see what the three steps look like and then loop back to you? Sorry, I wasn't putting my hand up, although it looks like it. I was signaling the number of the page. Oh, OK. I thought you were like saying hello to me. OK. Oh, yeah. Mr. Guerra was talking about page five. Of okay. Terrific. I, I have it. But of course, as the other committee, uh, right. would love to see it. That's before. All right. James, why don't you take us through those three interview steps so that when folks requ have requests in their emails for dates, they'll know what it's about. OK, great. So if I may just digress for a moment. So again, as a hypothetical and, and and thank you, uh, Jessica, for sharing um, the actual end date for the job portal. So if, if we looked at cutting off right now, in theory, uh, closing the job portal on Friday, May the 13th, mm -hmm. uh, I understand that majority of your meetings take place on Tuesdays. We could, um, if it's the will of the committee, present the candidates to you again in closed session. That's all of the digital artifacts. Each of you will receive an iPad and then the on-demand interviews, we could, if, if it's the will of the committee, do that the very following week. So if Tuesday, May 17th is a good date for everybody, um, we ordinarily do those, those types of presentations in person. Um, it's very difficult to do that in a virtual setting, especially since we're sharing the on-demand interviews. But again, I don't wanna make any assumptions. So if that's not appropriate, we can come back to this idea. So that's first, I guess, first order of business to consider is when can we convene to present to you the candidates? Um, so that week of May the 16th could work for our team. Yeah. So, so food for thought, something to consider. Okay, right. Because we have a standing meeting every Tuesday from 5.30 to 6.30. So we can, we can pull the group and we can make okay. sure that folks are available. And okay. if not, we work on something else, right? Okay. Right, but in person changes things because of travel time, right? So right, exactly. But you know, at at at, at this point, um, now that we know what the parameters are, we can ask staff to help us, right? To if this is not a time that works, then maybe we go a little later so that I know that those folks who are getting off work at five will have trouble getting to places at 5:30 if it were physical. So we'll we'll try to work those pieces, but that's kind of the time frame that we're working towards. Yeah, I think that I think 
in theory, that would work great because the following week is a, a major holiday weekend. And I know that there's we're also approaching the end of the school year. There's some challenges with scheduling around the holidays and the end of end of the school year. So that would lend itself well to to a, the June time frame of holding the interview. So you have your round one of interviews, uh, which, again, if we intend to have the first round um, to be held virtually with the candidates, we could pick two consecutive days um, to avoid any interview fatigue. Um, so one of the things we want to be mindful of is your time. You know, that you're volunteering your time to interview candidates. Let's just say hypothetically again, you, you might have six candidates to interview, you might have eight, um, whatever that number may be. We want to give you ample time allotted to interview those, those candidates. Um, we generally would recommend one hour per candidate per interview in round one. And okay. so if it's done, <clears throat> if it's done virtually, uh, not a problem whatsoever. We just need to identify two consecutive dates uh, because we anticipate you'll need two consecutive dates because there will be more than on average for us. I can share with you. We we average roughly six candidates um, per interview in round one. Um, and I'm speaking from past experiences. Right. OK, round two. Yes. And then round two, after you interview the candidates in round one, the idea is that you condensed that first round of candidates to a shorter pool of talent to consider in round two. Um, so again, in the spirit of transparency, we want to create a timeline that's conducive for you, your availability, but also informing the candidates of when potentially they would interview in round two if they advance to that stage. Um, and we would like to do those interviews in person. Okay. And then at the end of round two, then we as a committee process and we select um, whatever number of finalists that we believe is appropriate. And that is a recommendation that's made to the school committee. Um, and then the school committee has a public interview with those finalist candidates and they vote on a, um, um, the successful candidate. So there's really three different levels. And the, I think the last time we did this, um, more public engagement was actually um, created around the public interviews with the with the um, school committee. And I know some of you asked about um, additional public engagements. Um, so that's that's um, that was the way it was done in the past. And unless folks are suggesting something different, it might be a pattern that we may want to follow. Um, and then plan out the calendar, um, depending on how, you know, avail availability and so on. Um, I, I know I have two hands up. Let's, should we go ahead and take those? I know folks are concerned. I don't want folks to walk away from today with, you know, big questions on their minds. So let's do, let's do Michael and then, and then Jessica, maybe you can round up the end. Michael. Thank you, Dr. Edinger. I'll try to keep it up simple. Mr. Guerrero, if we look at four weeks, that would bring us to Friday, uh, May 13th. And just a minor point, but I believe in the past, you know, a lot of times superintendents are working on their applications on nights and weekends, and some tend to be deadline oriented. Mm -hmm. I know I certainly am as well. And I'm just wondering if you get an application sent on a Friday, is it almost better if we literally just push it to the following you know, Sunday or Monday. I mean, it's a couple of days difference, but it gives candidates a, you know, a last weekend to be working on their applications. And if that's the case, if that pushes us to like Monday the 16th, um, maybe Dr. Edinger, when, when Liz polls yeah. the search committee about our availability, you know, maybe we could potentially look at uh, on that one case, since we're talking now mid-May, maybe like meeting on Thursday instead of Tuesday, that gives Mr. Guerrero the, and his team the time to put together, you know, the end of the polls, the end of the pools, so to speak. So I just wanted to put that out for consideration. And I do think we as a committee need to talk about, um, you know, public engagement. I know the chair of the school committee is very focused on that as well yeah. in, the, in the final process, the public process. But I do encourage Mr. Guerrero to speak to each of us 
on this committee for all of us to have the ability um, you know, to talk with him, as well as it was raised publicly about, did you think our process was enough or could we continue to have, particularly during this early part of the process, some additional listening sessions and or you know, if some community groups want to hold their own listening sessions, and encourage some of us to right. listen in and someone from your team to listen in, et cetera, as well. Just wanted, to, I would think we could keep that public process open up until the point where we're interviewing, because part of the feedback from the public process is to help us be better search committee members and think about the perspectives we want to bring once we're getting into the interview process, et cetera. So. Yes, sir. And I think those are all valid points. And so we, we will generally have a grace period. So let's just say um, a candidate submits their application at the 11th hour on that Friday, if we were to stick with that, that date in mind, um, the 13th. There could be a 48 hour grace period because we would still need for that those candidates to complete the on demand interview, which is a requirement in our process. So, you know, we need to extend that as a matter of a courtesy to give them the opportunity for your consideration for them to complete the on demand interview. So if we wanted to extend the application portal as well and keep that open for a longer period of time, um, by all means, we can certainly do that. It's just a click of a button on our end. Um, so it's very simple to do. And then as far as ongoing community engagement, I think there is still an opportunity for ongoing authentic feedback and opportunities uh, for, for different groups, committee members, uh, however you want to frame it for those to whether they engage with us in a virtual format such as this one or even in person if that's allowed. Um, you know, our team is, is eager to get to meet and to visit with as many people as possible. So if if it's the will of the committee and your directive for us to meet uh, with other groups, we can certainly do so. Um, it was my intention as the principal lead to identify a, a very well-rounded search firm committee on our behalf to represent you and to, to engage with the, the community. So if you feel it's appropriate, um, as long as we have your marching orders and we understand what the goals and aspirations are, we have a timeline and then a format um, uh, configured, we can certainly do that. Okay. All right. Thank you for that. And, and if the search committee members will um, allow us to have a little flexibility to work all of this out and then present sort of a template of timeline to you, um, we will try to accommodate as many, many um, um, complications as we can, because we want all of you to be around the table and, and, and to be fully knowledgeable. So we will try very hard. Jessica, you have the last word today. Sure. Thanks. Just a couple things. One, um, I, I didn't quite get a sense of when the other two rounds would be. I got the um, 17th or the week of the 17th as a potential date for the first kind of uh, target. Uh, but in terms of the two day clusters that you had mentioned, do you have a sense of when those would need to be done by in order to get to our final goal of announcing someone ideally by the end of June? Looking at the calendar, and forgive me, I'm just looking down, so I'm listening. Um, so barring what date we select for the presentation of candidates and that digital format with the iPads, the on-demand interviews, uh, we, as a, a matter of professional courtesy, we like to at least inform the candidates with one week's notice uh, to prepare for the interview. So if we're presenting the, the um, candidates to you on the 17th of May, um, and I'm just using that as a rough sketch. So by no means is this firm. Yep. You could host the interviews as early as the following week for round one, but please keep in mind that's a holiday week uh, leading up to Memorial Day weekend. So yep. we may want to consider the first, the first week of June, um, looking at that first full week of June, either the week of the sixth with round one potentially, and again, these are just suggestions. You know, we're going to work around your availability, your schedules, and the candidates will do so as well. And then the round two could actually be the same week, depending on the, the days that we choose. But what I would suggest is considering the week of 13th for round two. And then any final third 
third round of engagement the following week. So you have the week of the 20th, and that puts you right in line with uh, what you've planned at a high level already with your timeline. Right. Okay, I see. Um, I guess uh, the the concern I have is just ensure to ensure that we get the dates out early enough so that at the point in which we are able to re-engage our stakeholders and a part of this process that they have the dates far enough in advance. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other question was just around, I know we said earlier that the survey was gonna close on Friday, um, not to the videos or the other uh, entries, but I was just wondering what you all plan to do with um, both the surveys and the videos and um, why am I blanking on the third? Um, uh, surveys, videos, and emails. Thank you, of course. <laughs> yeah, lots of those. Um, yeah, and, and how that would inform your process too. If uh, Yeah, it, any and all information will be uh, very informative for us. So whatever repository of information can be shared with us. So the aggregate of the survey data will be certainly invaluable. Uh, the videos and any other email uh, transcripts that you received as it relates to the superintendent search process. Um, so internally for us, we use a lot of technology to share input um, and feedback amongst ourselves um, within the JG Consulting family. Um, so Lizzie Carroll, who I uh, shared with you earlier is our chief of staff. She does a great job of communicating all of the various um, components of information that we receive from our, our school district partners. And so whatever you're able to share with us, we will share internally and that'll help us uh, with our screening and, and the vetting as we begin the recruitment phase. And, and Jessica, we also talked about um, throughout this, um, uh, our convening here as a committee that, that we, we will sort and package, right? The, this material, not only for the search process, but for the, for the school committee for their information um, on, on program improvement, but also give this information to the incoming superintendent so that yeah, he or they would have the information. So we right, will get the, the major themes and takeaways, et cetera, yeah. Right. And, and also uh, want, wants to disclose publicly that we will make ourselves available to you during your, st your standing meetings and the, and the schedule that has been provided to us. So each week, if you feel it's important and appropriate for us to participate in these, in these meetings with you, um, members of our team will, will be made a, uh, uh, available to you to answer any questions and to discuss where we are in the executive search process. That's terrific. Okay, um, I don't want to hold folks much longer. Oh, <laughs> hi, Roxy. All right, you you got like one minute. <laughs> you know, I'm gonna be honest. I just want to express like this feeling of anxiety of this time when I hear you say May 13th and present May 17th. You get an iPad with or do a hybrid and then kind of narrow it down the week later. Week week. I want to just, and this is not for discussion I, here, I just want to be mindful of because um, Dr. Energy, you said, you know, you'll come up with a timeline. I, maybe your search firm, Mr. Guerra, is able to, you have the 18 people, they can just narrow this down, and that's lovely. I want to account for the time that, to make an informed decision, to be able to really think about this process. I don't want to feel a, 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 like a, a knee in my back, like, Okay, well, here's eight people, which one? And then the next meeting, narrow down, a week later, narrow down from one meeting to the next. I just wanna be mindful that I understand the goal is June 30th and I'm fine with the goal, but I don't wanna take shortcuts to reach an arbitrary date like that. So I just wanna be mindful that people have time to think and process and really review the materials, whether it comes to eight candidates or not that it's really a process and it's not meant to be like, we're just gonna reach June 30th. Let's just get there, get there. I don't want that. Okay, thank you. Well, I mean, hopefully there's enough of us around the table, right? That we help each other pace and 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 and, and we, I, I don't think any of us will want to come. Right, we're a large district, we have a lot of different people. People yeah. take time to process. So if I'm saying that it, it takes me time to process, I don't want someone being like, well, just pick this person, okay? I'm saying that there should be ample time to be able to process the information presented and not just be in a rush or to select a particular person. That's all I'm stating. Yeah, so, so we're hoping, James, that you will help us with all of the technical particulars mm -hmm. and, and, and pave a road for us so we can walk down this road with some deliberation and some ease. 
and a sense that we have not only satisfied our own our own sense of responsibility for this committee, but that we're walking down this road with eight, nine yeah. companions and we're all in the same, you know, that we're all of the same mind. Our, our families deserve it and, and our children deserve it. So absolutely. I, I no, yeah, we're certainly sensitive and mindful of, of those feelings. So just know from, from the owner standpoint of the search firm that um, that's at the forefront of my mind. So uh, we will leave any anxiety that you may have about this process as we get going through the executive search process, the comprehensive overviews that we will provide to you will alleviate any concerns that you've had. Um, I like to use a baseball analogy now that we're back into the swing of uh, baseball and I'm looking forward it's to going. It's not a good week for that. You know where uh, you are, I'm, right? You know what, I'm, one of the things <laughs> I'm most excited for is to visit Fenway. So I, I, I promised okay. my team that I was gonna take them all to Fenway to catch a Red Sox game. Okay. Um, so so anyway, uh, to again, to discuss our track record, we're batting a thousand. We have never failed a superintendent search. <laughs> Um, so, you know, that's something that I'm very proud of, and we look forward to working alongside you in the spirit of, of collaboration. Um, so, again, if, if you feel it's appropriate for us to be a part of this, the same type of meeting next week, we'll make ourselves available. Uh, more, more information to come. I'll follow up, as promised, with that uh, additional communication. But, um, again, want to thank you for your service to the Boston Public Schools. Thank you for selecting us to work alongside you, and we're eager to get started. Okay, thank you. And on that note, I will entertain a motion to um, adjourn. Second. Oh, oh well, that was fast. Okay, Liz, can you call the roll? Thank you, Ms. Harvey. Yes. Mr. O'Neill. Yes. Thank you, Ms. Dr. Pignato. Yes. Mr. Roundtree. Yes. Ms. Tang. Yes. Mr. Valenzuela. Yes. Dr. Edinger. Yes. It's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. I'll see everybody next week. And thank you again, James, for being here. Oh, you're welcome. Take care. Thank everyone. you, everybody. I know this one ran long. We'll try to be better.